Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another exciting episode of Minecraft The Quest for All Biomes. Well guys, today we're going to be doing a little bit of an on-foot episode, we haven't done one of those for a while. So let us set off and explore the map. And the reason why, I came up here to uh, get a bit of a head start on getting the map going. And the sounds aren't working, just a second. Okay, yep, yeah, now the sounds are working. It wasn't that I had forgotten to switch them off. It's just a weird bug that I've got with Optifine at the moment where uh, I need to switch shaders off and on again and then uh, it uh, gets the sound going. And I learned that from my friend Silvacos. Uh, by the way, uh, I'm running Optifine now. Yep, I can zoom in on things like that uh, temple over there and it all works perfectly. <laughs> so also that means that we've got shaders. I won't be showing it in this exploring episode just because I don't think it will... It's meant for that sort of thing, but I will be showing it off in the next building episode, so you guys can let me know what you think about it then. I, I, I personally, if it were up to me and I wasn't doing this for YouTube, would have shaders on 24-7. I just really, really love the way it looks and the way it jives with what I do. <laughs> but uh, I know a lot of people out on the internet don't like shaders, so I'll only do it for that one little episode just to show you guys how things are looking. And then we'll probably never ever see it again. Unless you guys really like it. And then we can make it a permanent thing. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, so what's in these chests? Got some gold. And don't really need any of this. A golden apple. I'll take take these bones for bone blocks. Always useful. Emerald. Some diamond horse armor. Nice. Uh, Gunpowder. And just a whole bunch of other rubbish stuff. The main reason why I still come down into these uh, into these temples, strangely enough, is for TNT. And apparently, down here we have a whole mine shaft area. That is certainly very interesting. I was not expecting to find that down here. But uh, that is for another time's exploring, I think. At the moment, we're trying to fill in the map, not trying to explore underground. And I just jumped off. How silly of me. Okay, guys, I'll meet you back at the top of this. This might take a while. Okay, and let's keep moving because uh, we do have zombies all around and husks and whatnot. So we need to be a tad bit careful when we are uh, moving around. Are we going in the right direction, though? No, we need to head off down this way. Mm, down here we have a spawner. Alrighty. Uh, what spawner is this? Ouch. <laughs> and the dynamic lighting from Optifine is pretty awesome. It just lit up this whole area. Uh, let's just let this guy drop down. It is a zombie spawner. Alrighty. Uh, let's see if we can block that up again. Now, are there any chests in this zombie spawner? That is the big question. At the moment, it appears that there aren't. Ouch. We might die here, guys. Um, yeah, this isn't worth it. Uh, apparently also because uh, there were no, like, little razors. That gives me the idea that there were no chests here. But anyway, I, I do not want to die right now. We are a long way from home. And to come back all this way to get uh, what we, we don't have on us at the... Uh, what would drop from us at the moment... Would not be worth it. And don't worry that there's a lot of water in this map, guys. Uh, now that we're walking. Because I do have depth strider on these boots. So pretty much we go almost as fast while we go through the water as we would if we weren't going through the water. So there's that. Ah. Huh. Little baby bunnies. Don't see those in the wild too often. Usually they're fully grown. It's interesting. Again, here another one of those... Uh, beasties. Those husks, as they are called. So let's swim through the water. Alrighty. So, hopefully, because this is quite a large patch of water, we will run into one of the mushroom biomes that we so desperately need. But uh, other than that, guys, how's your week been going? Mine's been going alright so far. Had a bit of a rough start to it, I must admit, but... Uh, I don't really want to get into the specifics of what made it a bit of a rough start, but oh, oh well. The 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 fact of the matter that now it's all going so nice and so smoothly. And I just want to say hello. We've had a bit of a boom in subscribers. Um, 
might even be up to the 200 mark. I don't know if I'm uh, saying that a bit preemptively. <laughs> By the time that this video comes out, it would be really cool if we are. But hello and welcome to all of our new subscribers. My name is Athais, and on this channel we do a variety of different things, as you might have seen. Um, my main focus of this channel is Minecraft, and oh my word, that looks just like a meteor has struck in the ocean and left a giant crater. I don't know how well YouTube is picking up on this, guys, but that was quite a sight. I'm glad I dipped underwater at just that moment. Alright, uh, let's drop some seeds off. And I need to bring my map back up so that we don't lose our exploration. Basically, the goal of this series is to complete as many maps as we can, try and fill them all in, and the reason for that is to try and find all biomes. It's a bit of a hard achievement to get just normally, as you can see. I've already got four maps here with me, and these are maximally zoomed out. So it's it's not an easy thing, especially on the seed, because the seed has mostly been dry biomes so far. I mean, the amount of time it took me to find a mesa. Ugh. But, and it's raining. Oh well. A bit of a, a, a change of pace, I guess. A bit of rain never hurt anybody. Let's actually drop underwater. Just explore underwater for a while and see all the squid swimming. So yeah, guys. Uh, the... But... Uh, uh, sorry. Words fail me for a second. In addition to doing the whole quest for biomes thing, in the same series, on the same world, I'm also looking for interesting locations to build in while I explore. And when I find a particularly interesting location, I start to build there. At the moment, I'm building in an acacia... Or, sorry, a savanna slash desert area. Uh, that's bordered by a river, so I've got a dock going there, I've got a palace and a whole entire city. And next I'll be moving on either to a jungle or to a mountain uh, biome. So that's the thing that I'm deciding between at the moment which to go to. Now, Minecraft isn't the only game that I play on my channel, I also play Age of Empires. And Pokemon. And I've got previous Let's Play uh, called Summon Out Soulcraft Story, which is an awesome game that if you guys want to check it out, I would highly recommend it. So yeah, that's basically all the series I do on my channel, but in Minecraft itself I've got something else that I do, and that's the Diamond Society. It's an awesome, awesome, awesome group of people um, that have really, I've started to think of them as my friends now because they're so cool. <laughs> they're really nice to hang out with, and it's a lot of fun. We're doing a whole steampunk style build over there with a walled city and all sorts of things going on. Just check it out, lots of fun. So yeah, that's my little spiel for who and what I am for the new people that have joined. As I said, welcome. So yeah, as we continue on now, what I generally do during these these videos, uh, while we're exploring the terrain, if the terrain isn't uh, giving us anything specific to talk about, is I talk about little topics. So if any of you have a topic that you'd like me to discuss, or any questions you'd like me to answer, leave it down in the description, and that's what will be the topic for the next video. Uh, next exploring video, that is. Uh, because what we do generally is we do one exploring, one building, one exploring, one building. So if you leave a topic or a question down below in the comments, I'll get to that in the next exploring video. It's a good way for me to get know, to know more about you guys and for you guys to get to know more about me. So, yeah, a little bit about me. I live in South Africa. I've lived here all my life. I've never seen snow because of the specific part of South Africa I live in is extremely hot and it never ever snows here. So, I've always wanted to see snow, but uh, never really had the opportunity. I've never explored in real life like I have in Minecraft. So, basically, the furthest I've ever away, gotten away from my hometown is about two cities away. And that's not very far at all. So, I'm not very, very well traveled, but I do love the idea of travel and going out into the world and seeing things anew. It's, it's pretty strange that I've never done it, but I like the idea of it. Um, but yeah, so that's just a little bit about myself. Now, a lot of people tend to see South Africa and think, Oh, he's South African, that means he rides uh, elephants to work and does that and that. No, 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 guys. South Africa is nothing like that. Ignore what uh, any South African you've met previously that was joshing you. Well, that means joking around with you, told you. Um, South Africa is actually pretty much... It's a third world country, right? It, it doesn't have all the amazing things that America or Britain or any European country has. Um, but it does have 
like first world amenities like i still get games like this i can still play on a computer we drive cars to work all that sort of thing so it's it's not like we riding on the backs of elephants here oh hi wolfie um so yeah we definitely do see a, a lot on like the way the country works is not very good we've got a very well we've got a very corrupt government let me just put it that way in that it doesn't look after the needs of its people very well. Uh, for any of you that have ever seen the video Science Must Fall, that uh, if you want to get an idea of the type of people we live with here in South Africa, that video pretty much sums it up. And the scary thing is what, what the woman in that video is saying isn't just like her. That's pretty much uh, about, I would say, 50% of the population thinks that way. So, it is kind of scary when you think about it, but, oh well, there are lots of good points to living in South Africa as well, in the fact that it is a country that has a rich history, and it's inspired in a lot of ways my own liking for history, uh, because finding out where you've come from and where you're going to me as a person is very important, and I think that's because of growing up in a country like this, with a history that's very, very full of things that have happened to it. A lot of countries that are y as young as South Africa don't have a history like ours to look back on. Not that it's a good history by any means. I mean, a lot of bad things have happened in South Africa in the past, but it certainly isn't an un uninteresting one. So, yeah, that's a little bit about who I am and where I live. But uh, let's talk about another little topic, and that is this whole... Uh, Sorry, my mind is, is slipping on me. Recently updated games, or games that are coming out soon. For those of you in the rest of the world, other than countries that are, are PAL, I think it is, um, you get to play Sun and Moon already. And, and that is so awesome. I wish I could be amongst you. But probably when you guys see this video, it will be coming out tomorrow for me. So you guys have had it for a while, but I'll only be playing it then. I'm really, really looking forward to it. It's been getting pretty good reviews. I mean, IGN, which was pretty harsh on Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, have actually given it a 9 out of 10. So that, for them, is a pretty good rating. Um, and then another game that's coming out, don't know when, though, that I'm pretty excited for is Final Fantasy. Uh, Final Fantasy 15. I've been watching all the different demos for it that's coming out and whatnot. I'm really hoping it gets ported to PC. I don't have an, a, a PlayStation or an Xbox or anything, so if that game gets ported to PC, I will be so happy because I'll be able to play it. Um, the graphics on that game are amazing, and Final Fantasy always has a story that doesn't disappoint. I mean, I've loved nearly every Final Fantasy game I've ever played. I think the only one that I, I didn't really ever fall in love with was uh, Final Fantasy XIII. And I know it's common to trash on that game, and it's not a bad game, I'm not saying that. But I didn't fall in love with it the way that I fell in love with all the other games so far. So it'll be interesting to see whether this one keeps its charm, or whether it's something that's not as charming as the others are. There's a desert, not a desert, but an ocean monument over there. Um, but we don't, we never ever see, whenever we pass one of these, to get the Guardian's to do their funny little thing over the screen. I don't know why that is. Um, I was reading somewhere that if you go across one of them in peaceful, that it, and then go back into hard mode, the thing never respawns. But the thing is, I always play in hard. Um, I never move on to peaceful, so I don't, I don't understand how that could be the case. Especially on things like now, we're on hard mode. We've passed that thing only now. We've never been to this particular part of the map before. But yet, that thing hasn't respawned. Anyway. Well, not respawned, but spawned in in the first place. Uh, anyway, on to games that I'm excited for that are coming out. Uh, Dragon Quest IX. Uh, for the... I think, no, sorry. Dragon Quest VIII for the 3DS. That's another game that I'm super excited that is coming out soon. Um, Dragon Quest is an awesome, awesome uh, series of games. I don't know if you guys know a guy by the name of Akira Toriyama. You might know his work, though. Uh, Dragon Ball, basically. The whole of that uh, series, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT, all of that, was made by Akira... No, well, Dragon Ball GT, not. 
but uh, the other two were made by Kira Toriyama. So if you're familiar with those series, if you get into a Dragon Quest game, it's not going to be a Dragon Ball Z game. It's a very much an RPG style game, but it's done with his artwork style. So it's a very, very charming series of games and a lot of fun to just play. <laughs> um, another game that I'm super excited for is Legend of Zelda. Um, I think it's called Breath of the Wild. It's an open world uh, Legend of Zelda game and I don't see how that can go wrong. I mean, Legend of Zelda really, really lends itself to the whole exploring an overworld, going into little mini dungeons, fighting the boss there, coming out into the overworld. So the whole open world fits with the, the Zelda, Zelda theme very, very well. And that open world is massive, guys. If you've seen the trailers, it is huge. And even little gameplay demos that I've been seeing from it. Like, and it's a very alive world. Like, similar to Minecraft, if you got something, you set it on fire, that fire can spread. Uh, you can chop down trees. You can craft things in the game. You've got hunger that you need to attend to. Well, hunger in the terms of health, not hunger as in Minecraft hunger. But, yeah, it's very, very interesting the way that they've done things in the game. And I'm really looking forward to it once it comes out and I'm able to play it. Apparently, I don't have a Wii U, but apparently Nintendo's coming out with a new thing called the Switch at the moment. So it's going to be interesting to see how that develops. Uh, the Wii U was a failure, and Nintendo is well aware of that fact. So I think they're going to be very, very cautious this time around with releasing their new console, the Switch, and going to be trying to get it to succeed as hard as possible, because really if the Switch doesn't succeed, Nintendo is going to be in a lot of problems. Uh, but one good thing, the release of Pokemon Sun and Moon is really, really, really helping to bolster their sales figures because Sun and Moon have currently become the best-selling games on the uh, 3DS. And we can tell that because the demo is number one on the charts and pre-orders for Sun and Moon are number one on the charts. So, yeah, even before it's released, it's, it's going crazy. So... That's brilliant for Nintendo, and hopefully it helps fill their coffers a bit, which they desperately need at the moment. So yeah, guys, let's just try and make it to the top of this map, and then this episode will be over. Generally, for each episode, I try and fill in two sections of the map. So that means hopefully by next episode, we'll do a flying episode for uh, the exploration, and we will complete this entire map, so it'll be time to move on to the next map. And unfortunately, we didn't find a mushroom biome, uh, during this whole exploration, but it was certainly interesting, and I enjoyed my time with you guys. Um, but still, there's a little bit to go until we finish this, so let's get up onto the land, and it is pouring quite hard, so we have to be careful of mobs and such. Uh, there seems to be a bit of lava there too, so I want to avoid that if I can. Up on land, and up we go. Ah, a fall four tall reed. Don't see that every day. And we need to continue onwards, just a little bit more up. And then we will be done with this particular episode. And I think I'm going to do something a bit unorthodox, guys. I'm going to be switching myself into spectator mode for the next episode. And the reason is I'm going to be turning on shaders and showing you around the build, side with the sh build site with the shaders on, discussing our plans and whatnot. So yeah, guys, it's going to be a bit of an unorthodox episode next time, but I think it's going to be nice just for a change to do a bit of showing around instead of uh, just always having building going on. <laughs> so yeah, guys, thank you very, very much for watching. As always, my name is Athais. Thank you once again, and goodbye for now. See you guys later. Good night, and God bless. Bye.